Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic discussion is measurement using the oscilloscope. Our objective is to learn how to use the oscilloscope to measure basic properties of AC waveforms, including peak value, peak to peak value, period, and frequency. We'll examine traditional manual methods, as well as time-saving automated methods offered by some modern oscilloscopes. If you recall in the introduction to oscilloscopes lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel, we learned how to properly vertically and horizontally scale, position, trigger, couple, and attenuate a voltage signal for display purposes. Today, we'll use the oscilloscope to measure basic properties of an AC waveform. For the purposes of today's lecture, we'll be making use of the Tektronix TBS 1032B digital oscilloscope. This in no way is meant to be neither an exhaustive review of this tool nor an endorsement of this particular manufacturer or model. I only wish to present the functions of interest on a representative example so the viewer can gain some practical exposure to these functions and interpret the manner in which results are displayed. If you recall, I issued a directive at the end of the aforementioned lecture that went as such. All use of all instrumentation, including the oscope, in all scenarios must at all times be preceded by one event. That one event being, do the calculations first. You need to know everything you can about the waveform under inspection in advance, set up the instrumentation to respond to these conditions, and be smart enough to recognize when something is amiss. In this spirit, consider a time-variant voltage waveform with the following characteristics. It is sinusoidal in nature, has an effective or RMS value of 4.5 volts, and a frequency of 50 hertz. It should be well within your capacity to calculate peak value, peak to peak value, and period. By all means, pause the lecture and do so now. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. A waveform with an effective value of 4.5 volts and a frequency of 50 hertz has a peak value of approximately 6.4 volts, a peak to peak value of approximately 12.7 volts, and a period of 20 milliseconds. Calculations complete, we are now free to move on to the remaining steps. Our task is to set up the oscope to display this waveform and measure these properties. We first need to properly scale the vertical voltage and horizontal time axis and position the trace on the screen to accommodate this waveform. Additionally, we need to set up proper triggering conditions, select an appropriate coupling option, and establish the level of attenuation for our probes and scope. Given we anticipate a 6.4 volt peak value, and our display includes eight divisions, top to bottom, a vertical sensitivity of two volts per division might do the trick. Given this sensitivity, we should anticipate the waveform to peak slightly more than three divisions above and below the horizontal axis. Given we anticipate a 20 millisecond period and the oscope display includes 10 divisions left to right, a horizontal sensitivity of 5 milliseconds per division might do the trick. Given this horizontal sensitivity, we should anticipate a full cycle to be roughly 4 divisions wide on our display to accommodate 2 plus full cycles. Given this waveform is AC, we could probably leave the channel 1 trace vertically positioned right in the middle of the screen. Since we're placing the waveform on channel 1, let's trigger off channel 1 using the rising edge at 0 volts. This establishes the zero crossing going positive as the one beat for sampling purposes. Since this waveform is entirely AC, viewing it in either DC or AC coupling mode will accomplish the same purpose. Let's leave coupling in DC just to make sure the waveform doesn't include any DC offset. Regarding attenuation, I'm using a probe with 1x or no attenuation and I've made the oscope aware that this is the case. When I hook up the channel 1 probe to a function generator producing the sample waveform, I am rewarded with a stunning snapshot that meets my earlier expectations. It's not distorted, deformed, dorked up, and importantly, I didn't waste my time. Do the calculations first and set your oscope up in advance as asked and you too will be rewarded with usable results in less time. Do anything less than this and you will waste time on nonsense. Moving on, let's now measure the properties of this waveform. We'll first examine the traditional manual method and then examine more sophisticated use of cursors and automated time-saving measurement techniques. Manual measurement techniques, in contrast to the automated methods, are open to some interpretation. However, the values obtained should be close to your anticipated results. While admittedly primitive, these techniques are essential to the conceptual understanding of oscopes and are not to be dismissed. You never know when someone may ask you this on a quiz or an exam. Hint. Hint. 
Manual measurement using an oscope is really just a game of unit conversion. The advantage being, given vertical and horizontal sensitivity are independently adjustable, a user has a degree of control over the conversion factor. Additionally, given a trace can be repositioned up, down, left, or right on the screen, a user can take advantage of various markers to obtain more accurate results. You know, within each vertical and horizontal division, five subdivisions exist, where each subdivision represents one-fifth, or 0.2, of a full division. Given we've currently established the vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division, each subdivision represents 0.2 times 2 volts, or 0.4 volts. If we change the scale, this unit conversion would change. We can horizontally reposition the waveform using the horizontal position knob until our peak value aligns with a convenient vertical axis. Note the waveform peaks approximately 3.4 divisions above the horizontal axis. Given the current vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division, this corresponds to a value of 3.4 divisions times 2 volts per division, or approximately positive 6.8 volts, slightly higher than we anticipated. We can do the same for the negative half of the cycle. We horizontally reposition the waveform until our valley aligns with the vertical axis. Note the waveform valleys between 3 and 3.2 divisions below the horizontal axis. Let's say 3.1 divisions. Given the current vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division, this corresponds to a value of 3.1 divisions times 2 volts per division, or negative 6.2 volts, slightly lower than we anticipated. This being said, given a peak of positive 6.8 and a value of negative 6.2, it can be demonstrated this correlates to a peak-to-peak -peak value of approximately 13 volts, slightly higher than we anticipated, but in the ballpark. Recall we set up a function generator and verified it using the AC voltmeter and frequency measurement function. On casual inspection, the DMM says this waveform has an effective value of 4.5 volts and a frequency of 50 hertz. However, the oscope shows you the output of the function generator isn't perfectly balanced, and our display allows us to see this dirty detail. What's the deal? Does this waveform include a slight positive DC offset? When we switch to AC coupling mode, the oscope removes the DC component and the waveform imperceptibly shifts down, indicating there was a very, very tiny DC offset. However, it's pretty negligible. The real source of the problem is the function generator really is generating an imbalanced sine wave where the positive half really is larger than the negative half. Is this a deal breaker? It depends upon the application. However, because of the O-scope, you're now aware of this somewhat shoddy output and aren't just taking the voltmeter's word for it that everything's fine. Let's now manually measure period. To do so, one horizontally repositions the waveform until one zero crossing going positive aligns with the end of a division. Note the next zero crossing going positive is roughly four divisions away. Given the current horizontal sensitivity of five milliseconds per division, this corresponds to a value of four divisions times five milliseconds per division, or 20 milliseconds, exactly as we anticipated. It can be demonstrated by taking the inverse of this measured period value that our frequency is 1 over 20 milliseconds, or 50 hertz. The astute and observant among you may have noticed that the oscope has already gone to the trouble of performing the calculation for you and is displaying a frequency of 49.9 hertz, essentially 50 hertz in the lower right-hand corner. You note our current level of accuracy for manual calculations can be slightly improved upon by increasing our horizontal sensitivity to 2.5 milliseconds per division. You note at this increased level of sensitivity, the two zero crossings going positive are now separated by eight divisions. Given the current horizontal sensitivity of 2.5 milliseconds per division, this corresponds to a value of eight divisions times 2.5 milliseconds per division, or 20 milliseconds as previously. Ultimately, we arrived at the same values, although at this increased level of horizontal sensitivity, we're keenly aware of any minor errors that might have earlier escaped our notice. Really, that's all there is to be said about manual measurement using an oscilloscope. It's a game of unit conversion, and one can reposition or rescale the output to get the best results. Let's test your understanding of manual measurement using the oscope with the following example problems. For each set on the left, calculate peak and effective voltage and period and frequency 
given the vertical and horizontal sensitivities as displayed on the screen. For each set on the right, given the effective value and frequency, determine how many vertical divisions the peak value and how many horizontal divisions the period would encompass given the specified vertical and horizontal sensitivity. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. Don't make this hard. It's a game of unit conversion. This being said, be careful because there might be some tricks out there.